Thank you. Rivets, a blockchain smartphone secret sauce. I will deliver this in English, uh, relax, but uh, I do speak Mandarin. My company is called Rivets Corp. My name is Carl Weaver. I'm a wireless market mobile device specialist. I've been involved in the Chinese um, wireless industry since 1985. Um, I've also worked for Jamalto, Trustonic, and Arm. Uh, promoting uh, various embedded software solutions into smartphones. Um, today's presentation, again, the blockchain smartphone secret sauce, and it really is secret sauce. Let me move forward. What is decentralized security? Basically, you're transitioning from risk to trust, and that's really important. Everything in China is about trust, everything. So. Here's the new reality. You're moving from PKI, okay, to transforming into Lian, the blockchain. But also, you're taking a traditional single root of trust, and you're transforming that into dual roots of trust with the SIM, and the TEE, and what we're providing is Shuang, dual roots of trust. Let me move forward. So, you want to provide, or we're trying to provide, a, we're building a pro provable security. We are building provable security, which does what? We provide enterprise controls, smart contract controls, unique controls, user controls, and cloud controls, and we have rules for how you access the blockchain to provide you security. So that's how you get security, by adhering to rules. We are uh, basically, on your device, we have a measured execution, or the so-called TEE. This is called the Trusted Execution Environment. What is it? It's a security vault. It's a secret vault, and it's on your smartphone right now. Did you know that? No. No? Yes, no. So basically, all ARM technology, all ARM IP smartphones in the world, including Apple and all Android phones, have a technology called Trust Zone. Trust Zone is a firewall environment in a chip, and it accompanies the trusted execution environment, which is a software security operating system. Right? We take and use our developer tools to access the trusted execution environment in order to provide decentralized apps the access to the blockchain in a secure manner. So that's why you can see here we're using blockchain trans transaction processing, hash and integrity hash, transmit hash and integrity hash. Putting hardware to work, that's what we're doing. We're putting the existing hardware on smartphones to work and we're using our tokens to access security and provide value as you write contracts and other essential things in the blockchain. Uh, Rivet's toolkit for TE, protected services and keys and management, new business model. This is a new business model for assured security, um, uh, pro provable measurable controls to meet global GDP demands, that's good for European companies uh, or Europeans in general, blockchain powered environment. The environment is blockchain powered. We're delivering increased subscriber value for the subscriber, simplifying the user experience, okay? And um, we're supporting next generation e-commerce as well, commerce as well. Now, what is Rivet's security architecture? Well, I kind of went through it. We have developer tools. And it's already built into all the smartphones. You don't have to worry, where am I going to find this stuff? It's in your phone already. It just hasn't been turned on because that costs money. All right? And we provide these developer tools along with the TE and Arms Trust Zone. We provide, we are delivering third-party digital asset protection. 
your smartphone has lots of digital assets. You need to protect them, especially in the blockchain if you have cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin and it's in the open operating system of the smartphone. Wow, what a tian one done. Because hey, cook, hey, poor you. Hackers can steal your cryptocurrencies uh, if it's on an open operating system in the smartphone. That's not good. That's not cool. You don't want your valuable digital assets stolen. So we provide the way to secure that. We're pioneering the concept also of this dual independent routes of trust per mobile device. Um, and we're ensuring the quality of your transactions too. And we help you manage your digital assets across the collection of smartphone devices. Today, you don't, um, today, Jeff or Ian, you don't just have a smartphone. You have a smart TV, you have a smart car, you have a tablet, you might even have a notebook. Am I correct? You need to manage all of those assets, not just one. It's kind of involved with this whole concept of using the eSIM now. Right, we use one eSIM phone number for all these multiple devices. It's kind of connected to that, and we're involved in that as well. I'll go further and explain. But very quickly, in order to provide security for the embedded UICC or the eSIM operating system, these are the ways you do it. I'll be very quick. We, you provide it easy, either in a connectivity chip on your smartphone, you provide it in the TEE, Cushing Jirshing Wanjing, which is number two here. The third one is basically an eSIM uh, regular form factor SIM card, or number four, the eSIM module. And number five, something new, something called iSIM from Qualcomm. They're calling it Qualcomm SPU, or ARM is also supplying such a solution for their secure enclave, their, S, their SP, uh, PSA, actually, technology. Let me go forward. So we have a developer tool environment. We are providing developer tools, and we have our own platform for security of the blockchain. This is what we can do with our platform. It's called Rivets Register. We have a developer toolkit, and we are licensing that on GitHub. We're about to officially launch in a few weeks. We love to talk to developers. Are there any developers here in the room? Raise your hand. Who's a developer? Any software developers here? Oh, please, somebody raise their hand. Okay, so <laughs> Rivets Toolkit enabled trusted computing, trusted processing in device applications. Um, let me move forward. Decentralized security. I mean, the blockchain is about decentralization of your, your dApps, um, but what we're enabling is a new, um, a new model for shared control. We're reducing the single point of failure also. That's why you have dual roots of trust. You're reducing a single point of failure because actually the TEE can fail, the eSIM can fail, but together, on the same smartphone, they, the, the probability of failing is very, very low. We provide attestation to make sure that the person writing the contract is the person who's intended to write the contract, and not somebody who's stolen your smartphone in your Bitcoin wallet. Oh my God, they are in real big trouble when they do that. All right, so we're enabling new control models, reducing single vendor risk of critical systems, decentralized security. Um, introducing dual roots of trust. I explained that. That's the TE, the trusted execu execution environment, and the USIM or eSIM together for the attestation of the transaction you're putting into the blockchain. Assured instructions, what is that? Well, when you're going to make sure that your transactions are going into the blockchain or going into anything, you need to know that there has to be a known user, a known device, and a known condition. When you have all those, you can have assured instructions. We're providing assured instructions for when you write your applications into the blockchain. Shared control. I talked about this before, but this is a little bit better. You can see a better uh, representation of this right here. What is it? We have a, a Rivets um, trusted app in the TE. It's half the security, half the crypto. The other half of the crypto is in the USIM or eSIM. You notice I have a USIM and eSIM there. For us, it's irrelevant, the form factor. But the key is you must keep half the security or half the secret or half the crypto in both areas when you're trying to attestate the uh, device in the blockchain. That, behind the back, okay. <clears throat> TE and USIM opportunities. 
we will uh, we are going to widely deploy the TE to SIM communications uh, for various uh, protocols here, and also <clears throat> let me move forward. These decentralized security applications are basically. I hate to say this in China, but there's no censorship in a decentralized security application. There's no censorship. So blockchain technology is inherently decentralized. It's really important. And by the way, China is probably the largest blockchain market on the planet. There's just people outside of China who don't know that. We know that. State-of-the-art protection. We are providing state-of-the-art protection for identity, for blockchain applications, for Ulianwang, IoT, uh, and for enterprise usage. Multiple trust authorities assure provable trust, uh, enable strong GDP, I mentioned that before. Let me move forward. Blockchain delivered controls. I kind of said this before, but this picture really gives you a better representation. We secure in sort of a vault, a safe, if you will, inside the handset for you to uh, store and use when you need. And you have the crypto key to open it. You open it. The Rivets Network provides device and service uh, provider registration. All of these things you see here, we're conforming with the global standards, global platform. Does anybody know who the global platform is? Who knows global platform? This is a wireless show, right? Does anybody know what global platform does? They standardize the secure element and the TEE in all mobile devices. All right. Uh, and then our network offers a variety of, uh, we call it rivets, token, for usage. We have a we provide our rivets token that you can use to access the blockchain. Of course, you pay for that, right? Um, how am I doing for time? Am I doing okay for time? Oh, minutes. A lot can be done in two minutes. All right. So this, this dual root of trust technology, we have announced a relationship with Telefonica. Telefonica, does anybody know who Telefon Telefonica is? Telefonica. Anybody? So we've um, announced a relationship with Telefonica um, of Spain, but they're actually a huge mobile network operator. We've announced a relationship uh, and a project for this dual root of trust technology to provide mobile device security of the blockchain. There's the announcement right there. I wouldn't lie. Uh, this is me, Way Carter, Carl Weaver. Um, and I would, and there's, you notice the email, and you notice the cell phone, and you notice the website. I'm very happy to talk to people after this, um, after my presentation, because we know that there are lots of people interested in the blockchain in China. Um, irrelevant of cryptocurrency and irrelevant of Bitcoin, blockchain is much bigger than that. Blockchain will be used in China for multiple types of use cases. In fact, hundreds of use cases. So, everyone, Again, Carl Weaver is my name. I work for Rivets Corp. We provide mobile device security for the blockchain. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Carl. Um, do, any, any questions from the audience that, that, oh, that yes. you guys want to ask, ask oh, yes. Carl? You don't, you don't have to wait until, until afterwards. You can actually ask them yes. right now. Yes. You've got a minute and a half, I think. Something like that. No? Um, so, so a little bit unrelated to, to your presentation, but I'm curious, um, how long have you been studying Chinese? Excuse me? How long have you been studying Chinese? How old are you? No, how long? How old are you? Me. Should I, should I answer the question? Well, you're not a lady, so it should be okay. I'm 34. It's actually, today, today's my birthday. <laughs> so I've been studying Chinese before you were born. Uh-oh. <laughs> But we kind of look like brothers, don't we? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> so I've been studying Chinese for a very, very long time. And uh, to all you Western people out there, this is the center of the world for the wireless industry. If you want to um, attestate yourself in China, if you want to really understand China, speak Mandarin. Yeah, I completely agree. And so I'm curious, what, so what brought you here to China in the first place then? 
all the beautiful women. <laughs> no, no, not no. <laughs> cut, just cut that out from the video. Just cut that from the video. No, I, uh, I received a scholarship to study Mandarin Chinese in 1982 in Taiwan, actually, a part of Greater China. And um, around 1993, I started selling to mainland China. Uh, and I've been, I've worked in China for five years. I worked in Taiwan. Uh, for uh, seven, eight years, and my life is the Chinese world and Chinese wireless technologies. I've been involved in enabling the near-field communications in this country uh, with Jamalto, and also the uh, the trusted execution environment. More recently, I worked for ARM, promoting uh, embedded SIM and integrated SIM in the country. I just joined Rivets a few months ago. Uh, it's a really cool technology and a really interesting. Uh, somewhat small, smaller startup. We're an ICO, um, and it's a really interesting company. What they're doing is really revolutionary. So we expect the smart people in the audience to come up to us and have a have a chat with us. Cool, cool. And also, so I guess I mean, looking looking at the the mobile space just for a second. So I mean, I think we all know that it's gonna it's soon gonna be moving beyond the mobile phone. And so yes. how do you how do you see that developing? Here's what we see. We see companies which will probably remain nameless in China, adopting a blockchain and a designed smartphone. In fact, you will find any company that wants to continue to be in business will make or design a blockchain designed phone. Um, and they might add eSIM on over the blockchain because that adds another level of security. The whole key with these smartphones that are mobile payment solutions is the security. The security is absolutely critical. So that's what we see happening with the smartphone ecosystem here uh, because people want to access the uh, the blockchain and they want to do it in a very succinct kiss manner, kiss right. principle manner. Right. They don't want to have to worry so much. They, they want it to be just like your football. Alipay or Tencent Pay. They want it to be that simple, and that's what we're trying to enable with the smartphone manufacturers and the entire ecosystem here. Good, great, great. So no questions from the audience, are you sure? Are you sure? If not, Carl's gonna be here waiting for you. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank you. Let's do another round of applause. Okay, so um, our last presentation, but not our last uh, piece of content, um, is coming from Daniel Silver, who is the 